Howdy, I'm Sadie Mae with The Awesome Orange, and this week I have a very special video for you. I teamed up with my friends over at Sabertooth Power Carving Tools, and we came up with the We Make Sawdust Challenge. And the idea of the We Make Sawdust Challenge is to show how four awesome makers can start with the same tools and end up with four awesomely different projects. And the challenge this time is we all have to build a candle holder it can be a big one, a small one, hold one candle, hold multiple candles. Just has to be a candle holder using these burrs. Let me show you what we're working with. First up, we've got the three quarter inch roto saw burr in fine grit, a two inch ball nose burr in fine grit, and my favorite, a one inch sphere burr in fine grit. If you follow me over on Instagram, you've probably heard me talking about this challenge for a while now. We've seen everybody get their goodie boxes, them starting to make their projects, and you've probably voted on whose project is your favorite. Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the We Make Sawdust Challenge, and they're gonna receive $300 in Sabertooth cash. Well, now that we know what we're building and what burrs we're using, let's go ahead and check out everybody's awesome build. All right, I'm up first, and even though I can't win, I do get to play along. And for my candle holders, I decided to make three and showcase three different textures using each burr. Each burr is capable of doing so much, but this will give you an idea of what each can do. So I found some birch in my scrap pile and milled them down to the same size, face jointing it, edge jointing it, thickness planing it, ripping it to width, and then finally cutting it to length. I liked how light the birch was, so I thought adding a pop of color to each would just make the candle holders that much more awesome. So to separate the color from the texture, I cut a dado using the table saw about an eighth inch deep on three sides of the board and did that twice to give me a section about one and a half inches wide that I can add a pop of color to later. And with that complete, it was time to start carving. And I'm starting with a two inch by half inch bullnose burr. I've never used this one before and I wanted to try something really different. So I, as you can see, I'm making this really grooved wavy texture into the birch and it's super easy. Sometimes you have to be careful on how you control it so it doesn't go too wide, but overall it's a simple texture and it gives a really cool effect. Add extra touch, I went ahead and added the texture to the sides of the piece. So three sides of this is going to have texture on that. I didn't do the end grain of the board just because I thought it might not turn out so great or might burn. So I went with just the three sides. Once that one was done, I moved on to the one inch spear burr and went to a dimpling texture that almost gives you like an orange peel type effect. And it's one of my favorites. I've used it on several different pieces, on a big storage bench, on a headboard, and you just can't go wrong with this texture. And it's a great beginning, beginner texture that anybody can do. All right, and for my third and final texture, I'm gonna be using the three quarter inch roto saw burr. And I'm just kind of brushing this back and forth across the top to give a, a roughed up texture. And I'm doing it at a diagonal. And I thought it's gonna look really cool continuing that diagonal down the sides of it. This piece of wood had a little bit of a live edge to it, which I think kind of went with this texture, just kind of organic feel to it. There we go, one, two, and three. Three awesome textures, three awesome burrs. Then my least favorite part, and probably everybody's of a project, is sanding. But this little micro zip did help me get into the grooves um, and you know finish off these pieces to make them nice and smooth, and get all those sharp edges off. The next it was time to put some holes in here to for the votive candles. This is a one and five eighths inch Forstner bit. 
And I started by laying out where they're gonna go to evenly space them. And then I tried drilling them using my um, drill and it wasn't working out so great. And then I remembered, hey, I have a drill press. Once I got the bit in the drill press, making the holes was so much easier. I don't know about you, but this is the one tool that I always forget is in my shop. Um, but when you need it, it works out awesome and makes some really cool curly cues. And then lastly, to finish these off, I used an oil wax mixture that I had in my finishing cabinet and it just gave these guys a nice little seal and brought out all that beautiful color of the birch. And here we go, one, two, three awesome textures with those three pops of colors. Add some candles. And you have some awesome candle holders. These would be great for pretty much any room and great for gifts as well. I hope you enjoyed my build, but now let's see what everybody else made. First up is gonna be Keith with Blackthorn Concepts. And Keith, he has never carved before, always wanted to, but he jumped right in. He bought himself a Fordham rotary tool, found out that you can carve alabaster stone, ordered it and went to town in making his project. I really admire how Keith just jumped into it and went all for it with getting the tools and with the carving project. He's using his Panavice model 350 to help kind of spin it. And I'm like, oh, I might need to buy one of these. Plus his dust collection setup is awesome because that is one thing when you're power carving, it is messy, but it's still awesome. And even though Keith went with stone, he still had to sand it, but he did get to do a little bit of wet sanding and it comes out with a really cool matte finish on the stone. And his candle holder ended up being an awesome tulip. I love how it just glows through the stone. Awesome job, Keith. All right, next up is Kyle with Warly Fab. Kyle too had never really done any carving. He'd used some um, grinding discs before, but never with some detailed burrs. Here he's starting off with doing a star and he actually using his trim router as his rotary tool, which I never ever thought to use before. He's making a lantern and adding all different sorts of texture to it, rounding over the edges, doing the cross hatch on part of it. His is made out of walnut and I believe it's Paducah on there as well. Then he adds some more texture using that one inch sphere burr that's my favorite and doing some dimpling there. Drilling a hole to vent out the lantern, I believe. And then he'd get a perfect snug fit for his candle. This lantern turned out awesome, Kyle. Great job. All right, and last but not least, we have Jesse with Built by Jesse. Jessie too had not ever power carved before. So she did a lot of test practicing. You see her using the roto saw here to create an awesome pattern on some pine. Made this candle holder that's turned out awesome, but she didn't want to stop there. So she kept trying different techniques and different textures. She's trying the ball nose here, creating a kind of a I don't know, cross pattern with that as well. But then she landed on this piece of mahogany she had and liked the shape of it. So she decided to give it a little bit more texture that kind of coordinated with the shape that was already there. 
I too, again, just love how she jumped in and went in and started making and kind of made the carved more organic to the piece that she was working with. I really like too how she continued the texture onto multiple sides of the piece. So making it more of a, you know, 3D carving instead of just paying attention to one side, which gives it definitely a lot more interest. If you want more information on the three other awesome makers that joined me in this challenge, I'll make sure to leave links in the description box below. So her first candle holder and her second one. I love how she made the hole for the matches and she has a cool, very cool stepped look. Awesome job, Jessie. Well, that was awesome. I had so much fun carving along with Kyle, Keith and Jesse, and their candle holders turned out awesome. And they just all have so much personality. It's awesome to see that you can make so many different things with the same tools. But I know what you're here for. You're here for the, to find out who the winner of the We Make Sawdust Challenge is. A winner who's gonna win $300 in Sabretooth cash. Special thank you to Sabretooth for allowing us to do this challenge. I hope it's the first of many to come. So without further ado, the winner of the first ever We Make Sawdust Challenge is If you guys enjoyed this video and this challenge and want to see more of it, be sure to hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more awesome builds. And until next time, remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.